Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the pro tuning tools of your Phytech Go EFI system. Before I get into that though, I'm gonna let you know that I broke my clutch pedal again. And uh, I'm gonna show you a real quick clip on what I did to fix that. And then we'll get back to this. So right here is where the crack is, which if you look, it's not even that bad of a bend. Um, but it is enough that prevented me from disengaging the clutch enough to shift gears. So what we'll do is we'll get a piece of steel welded on right here. And uh, hopefully that lasts for the remainder of the year at least. But I may need to get a whole new clutch pedal because obviously the metallurgy of the steel is in poor shape since it is cracking and not just bending. So, well, we'll see what we can do. So as you can see, I have put the clutch pedal back in. I've reinforced it with some extra metal uh, in the hopes that it doesn't happen again. Uh, I also redesigned the bracket back against the firewall. So I removed the spacer that I had, right? And that brought the, the master cylinder right against the firewall, uh, which shortens the rod that connects to the pedal itself. Um, I also have brought the master cylinder to the left by about half an inch and slightly upwards and it has seemed to make a difference it feels slightly lighter on the clutch pedal um, so all in all so far so good now it's just time to drive it around and see if it holds up so now that the car is drivable again we can get back to the tuning now the tuning software is included with all the power adder kits um, from Phytech they're just um, stored inside the handheld system itself. You just download it onto your laptop, computer, whatever, and away you go. Um, I'm not sure, but I think that the software is still compatible with non-power adder systems, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll leave that to you guys to figure out. Secondly, you do not need a laptop to use the, the Pro Tuning software, uh, though it does offer some certain conveniences, but 99% of the stuff that you need to do can be done through the handheld itself. Okay, now, if you wanna use the laptop, the first thing you're gonna need to do is install your K-Line adapter, which it gives you a PDF and instructions on how to do that. Very simple, just follow the instructions where you go. And once it's downloaded, you can open up your uh, pro tuning software as is. Now there are a couple discrepancies between the handheld and the laptop software. So if we go down to Go EFI Pro Tuning, uh, the first is breakpoints, which are you know where your uh, map sensors and RPMs uh, that, and the other is just the name of Excel Pump. So now over on the laptop, if I go to Fuel Transients, you'll see that's our Excel Pump. And uh, if I go down to Settings Calibration, that is our uh, breakpoints, okay? Now to use your laptop to tune, you need to take your USB cable from your Phytech unit, plug it into your laptop, and then it's gonna say, uh, let's see if I can get that to focus. Change to K-Line adapter. We'll click on that, and it's going to log into the laptop itself. And we should be connected, but we'll say dash. You'll see some lights. Maybe it didn't work yet. There it is. Now it's working, I think. So what we can do is we go to, let's say, uh, fuel transients. We'll click on one of these values here and it brings up our actual information and we say read. And that will bring our information up from our ECU. So now I've already made a bunch of changes to this. Um, before you make any changes, I highly recommend you download the instructions or I guess the definitions list from Phytech's website and it will tell you which each of the uh, values mean or what it does. Uh, the other thing I highly recommend is keep a log. Okay, so I have a log of all the little changes I'm doing. So, you know, this is my, what am I looking at here? Uh, my loop speed, this is my fast uh, decel or fast decay, 170 uh, Fahrenheit, Excel pump, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the reason for this is you're going to make small changes and different changes at different times and you want to see, you know, is it making a difference? If you didn't, you can always revert back, etc, etc, etc. 
So there's two areas in the tuning that I feel most people are gonna get the most benefits from. And the first one is your Excel pump. Uh, most people I have found are having issues with a, a, an acceleration bog. So when you dip into the throttle, uh, from whatever RPMs it bogs and then it picks up and goes from there. Now if you check your logs you'll find that most cases you are seeing a very lean condition going to a very very rich condition and I'm experiencing that myself and you can adjust that by adding fuel to your Excel pump under say 170 degrees or you know even your fast uh, Excel whatever. Again, learn your what your definitions are so you can adjust appropriately and that's going to fix a lot of the problems. Now the other area of benefit is your break points. So we go to settings calibration, I'll click on that, dip it up, read, and as you can see I've already made the changes to mine. So the default settings for low uh, map is 45. Uh, then wide open throttle is 95 and boost is 180. Now I'm running a naturally aspirated engine so it didn't make any sense for me to have those values. So by going to 37 and a half, 70, 95, I now have a, uh, rather than a three by two table, I'm running a three by three table because I can actually utilize my boost map pressures. I also lowered my high RPM from 6,000 to 5,500 because well, I don't run to 6,000 RPM. I, you know, I usually go to 5,500. Now, if you're running a 7,000 RPM engine, you may want to increase that to 7,000. So this is where you can refine your brake points to fit your engine's parameters. Um, if you're running boost pressures in, you know, say 165 PS or KPA, you may want to change your boost map to 165. So. Use your logs to determine what you need and what you you know what values are going to work for you. Uh, if you don't know how to use the logs, please watch my previous video and it can show you you know how to log your system through your uh, Excel files. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description on that. We also have your running temperatures. So this is low temp. Now default was 21 degrees. I never run my engine that cold, so I changed it to 32. Middle temp is usually 65 and 170. I don't know if it's a great idea to play with that, at least not at this point, but again, you may want to just refine it. If you live in Arizona, where it never gets that cold, you may want to change these to you know, something different, maybe 180 degrees and, and 75 or whatever. I don't know. I'll, again, I'll leave it to you to, to change it to your engine based on your um, area. Now, these are obviously not outside temperatures, these are coolant temperatures. So obviously I've been making quite a few changes to my system, particularly in the Excel pump. Uh, you can also tell that from the records I've been keeping. Um, but I still feel that when I get on the throttle, there's still not enough fuel. So we're gonna make a couple more changes. So we're gonna go to our Excel pump at, in cold temperatures, cause it's now cold out. And we're gonna change this to, I don't know, 6%. And then we're going to go down to our, where is it, our fast excel. We're going to change that to 6% as well. And then what I'm going to do is change my excel gain, which uh, it changes how quickly, like when you're, when you're snapping that throttle open really fast, it's going to be more sensitive. So I'm going to change that just to, I don't know, like I'm not, I don't have any determining values here. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. But we'll say 135. I highly recommend making small changes at a time because you don't want to go too overboard with your with your changes in case you go too far. Um, oh, there is another real good spot to change. Uh, so first I'm gonna send this to the ECU. So send to ECU. There you go. And we'll close that. Now back on the handheld unit, because I could not find this in the laptop version, if I go to AFR closed loop, these values right here are really important, I feel. So again, if you're feeling that you're getting that uh, on throttle bog where it goes lean, 
dumps way too much fuel in, goes way rich, you can adjust some of that from here. So what I did was I lowered my fuel trim max down to, I think I called it 12.5% or 12%, and it changes it to whatever value it feels. And so I'm limiting the amount of fuel that the system can dump in, so it won't overcompensate. But I left my trim minimum, so how much it can lean it back out, much higher, because uh, sometimes, again, it overcompensates and I want it to remove that fuel quite quickly. Um, so ideally you want to get these values, you know, within 10% on each one, but uh, you know, it's just about fine tuning it. If I go up to my AFR targets, you will see it still says 1100, 3000, 6000, um, 95, 45. It's gonna, I don't know how to change the wording on it, at least, I don't know if you can or, or I just don't know how yet. But um, just remember that now, at least for me, this is 37 and a half, this is 70, and this is my 95. So just because this, your breakouts are different, um, actual, these are just because these say one thing, you need to remember what they actually are based on your settings. So now that I've made some improvements by tuning with the Excel pump, uh, the breakouts, um, and whatever other you know settings I've changed, I still feel that it's not refined enough. So I'm going to go into the CAM tables or the VE tables, uh, and I'm going to do this on my laptop because I feel I got more visibility. So fuel control, we'll scroll down. I'm using CAM setting two, so that's the one I want. Uh, we'll just widen these out so you can see what the values are. So, like so. We'll say read. I don't know why that one's in red, but whatever. Uh, in any case, this is my VE table that's from my ECU right now. Uh, so this will look exactly the same if you go into on your um, handheld. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just make a few changes because from my logs I felt that at full throttle around 93 kPa from about 1100 to 3000 that so in this area I didn't have enough fuel is too lean so before you make any changes I recommend you at least write these down take a picture of it whatever uh, and then you know make small changes as you go so we're looking at let's say 80 point seven times 1.05847 7, so we'll change that to 80 84.7 tab so I made my changes so these four values are increased by five percent these two values are increased by two and a half percent and we'll do send to ECU like so and now we are saved into our Phytech. Um, yeah, so with that, we can now go for a drive and see if it made any difference. Well, after all the changes that I have made, I find the car is a lot more drivable, particularly in the gear changes. Uh, it, and I don't have as much hesitation. Uh, those bogs that I'm having aren't nearly as bad. It doesn't get as rich as it did before. Uh, it doesn't get as lean as it did before. I find it's more responsive. Uh, the car starts better. So overall, uh, a big improvement. Let me show you here in the data logs some areas where I've improved. So keep note of my throttle position sensor right here. So you can see I'm into the throttle, then I go hard on the throttle, and it leans out to as bad as 17.1 AFRs, uh, which then it dumps some fuel in. You can see a 26.6% increase in fuel from the Phytec, where it goes 10.8 to 1, so there's my rich bog and then it's having a, a, a tough time leaning that back out. So you can see some huge variations in the amount of fuel it's adding and pulling out. So some heavy fuel added in here and some heavy fuel being removed right down in here, even under full throttle conditions. Uh, now, if I go to a more recent um, log that I made after all the changes, again, here I'm rolling into the throttle, I hit it, and it's not nearly as much of a lean condition. And so the, Phytech isn't adding as much fuel. Again, I'm limiting it to just 11.7%, but it's not pulling as much fuel out as either because it's getting to within its uh, you know, target AFRs much more quickly. Um, but 
I do need to make still a lot more changes as it is a learn as I go kind of system and that's just the name of the game. So if this video is any help to you, please hit that like button, subscribe if you can, and until next time, thanks for watching.